Hey, what's up everybody? Had some luck last week at my pawn shop. Somebody brought in a small collection of bayonets, about 15 or so at most. And I happened to walk away with one of the nicest ones. As in, uh, beware old dudes with thick wallets. I will tell you the story after I show this, man. I ticked him off because I could tell he wanted this and was ticked off that I was the one buying it and not him. But then he got revenge later on because he had a lot more money than I did. Money to burn. Anyways, I got a really nice French cross bayonet. Obviously from a collector, then you had to take care of them. There is no fresh rust on it all. The signs of rust, which is pretty much just patina. There's no pitting or anything on it. It's all aged. It's beautiful condition. Scabbard is in really nice condition. In fact, the side that normally would have the most rust, if you got one that was really rusted up, would be this side. It's in. That is where the little belt loop on the frog would be, so this would be facing away from you. So naturally, if the soldier was out in the rain and this clothing was wet, this side would be constantly getting hit with water. So makes sense that it would all be in this area, but not bad at all, man. Just more patina than anything. Side facing out. Excellent, man. <laughs> Just a few little teeny tiny spots here and there. But nothing to really give a crap about. And then, unbelievably, as I see a lot of it around here, I'm surrounded by idiots. They didn't try and clean the thing, as in take off any of the rust or shine it up or whatever. Or even worse, which I've seen a lot of the idiots do around here, try and put an edge on it with a freaking disc grinder. Why is stuff like this in my area always passed down to the blue color tweaker druggy in the family that doesn't give a crap? So I've seen some older than this or even newer or whatever, just really nice ones that could have been really nice and they just destroy it. As in, not disc grinder, as in, no, disc grinder, because that's cheaper. Show you guys this. You see, man, really freaking nice. And on this one, the serial numbers don't match, but it's again really nice. I don't care. I'd rather have one in this condition than one where they match and is all rusted up or whatever. Which, finding ones this old with matching serial numbers, that's a lot harder. Anyways, the one on the scabbard here is FG92791. And the one on the bayonet is... I think that is FJ23293. The F and J are written in script, real fancy, and it's hard to tell. That was one thing on looking this up. I couldn't tell that it was L. Denny. Because all the capital letters, a lot of scrolling in the writing here. It's a real fancy script. But I did find other ones online from the uh, L. Denny Arsenal out of Paris, France. On this one, I'll show you guys a close up. It's etched right in this area. And pretty much all the ones I've seen like this, that should be a normal thing with these. If you find a real one, it should be etched with the arsenal, the city, and possibly the country or whatever of origin, and then the date towards either just the year, like this one, or I've seen some to where it's the month and year. And I think I spotted a window where it was the day, month, and year, and it was a really long freaking name for the arsenal. I could not read it. They just get really fancy with their writing when it comes to etching it. Which that's something I like about the French bayonets. They got style. And 
on other markings this one has an anchor on it which pretty much says it's possibly put into naval use and not really small but uh, small enough to where I can't show you too good but it's right there in between those two rivets just an anchor stamp and then on the other side other than the serial number it's got a circle stamp with letter A and then another circle stamp with the letter R and then closer to this end here I can't tell what's in the center of it because it's pretty small but it looks like a kind of a shield type stamp and hold it like this <laughs> number 17 right there and then just below the cutout here number 56 sideways right where the quillion starts to bend zero and a three There it is. I'd have to put it under a magnifying glass because it's a really small mark. There's some kind of little symbol stamped right there. And then same thing, I'd have to put it under a magnifying glass to see it better. Diamond shaped stamp there in the ball fennel with either a zero or an O in it and it looks like just below it, really tiny, a little star can't tell until I put it under a magnifying glass on the rest of it man as you can see nobody's tried to clean this and that's something that I've been seeing on eBay they've got some nice ones but they've also cleaned it to where they've taken still wool or whatever and taken off all that dark patina and shined it up down to shiny metal like it's been chromed then same thing on the brass taking off all the patina which on this it's got some dark patina but it's in the right spot on the button here where you'd press to take it off of the gun it's all darker around that which would make sense from the oil in your hands and stuff and thumb from constantly pressing that the spring leaf spring there nice and dark the only spot on this where it's got any damage, which is no big deal. On the grips, right where it starts to meet the brass, it kind of tapers out. That side, just the top of it chipped off, but I can tell it happened while it was in use, as in all the patina on the wood matches, including in the crack, man. It's an old freaking crack in the wood or break or whatever. And just few dings on this side which could be from it smacking against their clothing if there were any metal buttons or anything on their clothing that's what it looks like like it was hitting some snaps or something on their pants or whatever the other side not as bad and then just a few dings here on the end of the pommel but not bad so something from 1881 man and these go back further than that. Most of the ones I've been finding were uh, mid 1870s. Like a lot of them I see dated 1874. In fact, there's one at a gun store in Havasu for way more than what I paid. I think he wants 225 bucks for it. It's 1874, and I can't remember where that one was made. Really long name, real fancy, and I could never read it. So, anyways. I'll do it this way. I'll show you guys the blade up close. Blade's got a nice patina going down it, and uh, it's only one spot on one side of the blade that almost looks like maybe it was a drip of blood that dried on it and just left a spot of rust, but it's not pitted or anything. It's just a little bit thicker than the rest of the patina. a little 
double anchor stamp showing that it was for naval use. And like I say, man, just light patina going down the blade on both sides because it hasn't been cleaned. And then right there, to me, that looks like it was a drip of blood that dried on the blade. Actually, it looks worse in the video here just because of this camera, but it's really not that bad. It's just a little darker than the rest of it. Otherwise, pretty much the same on that side. And no bends or bad nicks or dents in the blade. It is perfectly straight. Just a little bit of nicking right in that area. Like maybe there was sand or just dirt inside the scabbard when they slipped it in. Doesn't look like it was from being banged up. And as you can see there, that is nicely etched. <laughs> Very fancy on the capital letters. I could not tell that that was an L, let alone a D. The reason I knew that was Paris is because <laughs> that's the only thing you can think of, and they just had Paris 1881 because they can spell the L Denny either. Just it's whoever etched it. Because I did find some of these for sale online, mainly on eBay. Same thing, L Denny Paris, and some of them have a larger sweep in the D there, so you can really tell that it's a D and not something else. Same thing, man. Just nice light patina, which you should see on something this old, now that it's wanting to go blurry. I like this freaking camera, man, but the, the autofocus on it is shit. You gotta be one of those mutant type people that can hold their hand perfectly still, and I'm not mutated enough yet, so sorry about the shakiness. So anyways, the story about Geezer with Thick Wallet. This wasn't the only French one that they had. They had both variations as in, well there's a number of variations on mainly on how they put it together which has to do with either rivets or screwed on or whatever for the grips I believe. but. Uh, couple variations of a man lurcher berthier bayonet. I've got one to where the quillion has been shortened, cut right about there and then rounded off. They had that one for 49 bucks and it was in as good a shape as this or better. Geezer got it. They had another one with the full quillion, same condition. Geezer got it, same price, 49 freaking bucks. I don't know who came up with 49 bucks because they were worth well over 100 like this, but whatever, man. They had, I think, two Argentina bayonets. One short, Mauser sized one, but nice with the original leather scabbard with um, not steel but brass tip and whatever. They had another Argentina bayonet which was one of the short saber variations that had the alloy grips and stuff. Excellent condition. Snatched it. Both of those. Oh, wait. One of them was 49 bucks. I think the saber because it was longer. I think they were pricing them on the size or some dumbass thing. I think that was like 60 bucks. The rest I didn't get a chance to really look at, but I could tell they were all really nice. Had a lot of just German Mauser bayonets, like a couple of uh, I think K98s or whatever. And then one 
fairly long one that I didn't get a chance to look at it, Matt, because he snatched it pretty damn fast, but every other nice bayonet this old bastard snatched because they were all underpriced man so it's like screw it gonna grab them all he spent at least 500 on them Just, ah. <laughs> but yeah that ticked me off because uh the reason this guy got a lot of them they were picking favorites which I freaking hate, man. It should be first come, first serve at any type of store, not just pawn shops or whatever. I guess this guy had come in earlier and looked at the pile that wasn't locked up in a cabinet like this, and that's why he missed it. And he's like, oh, come back and buy a bunch from me if you can keep them behind the counter here and not set them out yet. So that's what they did, man. They kept them behind the counter for somebody that may or may not show up and made it to where nobody else could buy them. As in, I would have ran back to, I had the cash for this, but I would have ran to the bank to get more money for the others. Man, I, he probably got close to a thousand dollars worth of bayonets just for a few hundred. Anyways, I at least got him to knock the price on this. This one was priced Still under of what I see ones in this condition going for. He had it at 99 bucks, and I got him to knock it down to 85 plus tax, so 91 bucks and some change. So not a bad deal, not a bad day. And uh, I've been wanting to get out of town. I'm getting sick of just ha hanging around here in Kingman, man. We really don't have much to do around here other than yard sales and the swap meet and alcoholism and mass amounts of country music so I might take a trip to Bullhead or Havasu tomorrow and maybe I'll find some more because they got a lot of freaking gun stores that have old bayonets so catch you guys later once again beware of geezers with thick wallets